welcome to a comic book look brought to you by the 501st Legion. Comic book, look your weekly comic book show. We talk about anything in the comic book industry. You want it, you got it. My name's John, aka at sign John on demand. We got Tom <laughs> over here at sign Tom Stu Divine, and we are at a comic book look. And uh, we have a very special guest today, so we're gonna give the show a big aka. We're rocking with the Norse Fjords this evening, um, and we are talking to Eric Evanson. And we met Mr. Evanson live from SpringCon up in the cities, which we had a blast at. Totally did. And we talked about our experience. How was your experience at the con? Well, it was pretty good. I mean, I spent most of my time there behind a table, so I was pretty, <laughs> pretty much just uh, sitting in an uncomfortable chair for two days. Um, but it was cool. I got to hang out with uh, Len Straszewski from uh, Justice Society. Oh, awesome. And uh, a little bit Bill Willingham. I didn't really talk to him as much because he was on the other side of Len, but uh, yeah, it was pretty cool actually getting to getting to talk to some veterans of that uh, vintage. That was really cool. Oh, yeah, totally. Um, and other than that, yeah, I made made some sales, hung out. My wife uh, sat with me in a supportive and uh, awesome way that uh, hey. uh, made me <laughs> made me realize how lucky I am to have a wife who goes to a comic con for two days. That's rough. It can get just, boring real quick for somebody. Who's yeah, just but there. she's in, she's uh, in the Game of Thrones series right now. Oh, so. nice. Yeah, so she doesn't get bored easily. Good. <laughs> Currently, good, good. yeah, that's like one of my favorite shows. It's so good. That's mm -hmm. awesome. But yeah, well, definitely. Thanks for being on the show. Um, you know, this is great. If you want to first, just kind of tell our viewers um, a little bit about yourself, and you know, um, uh, and about your books and what you've done, real quick. Kind of just kind of introduce yourself here. Sure. Um, well, you guys did a marvelous little um, uh, introduction of Gods of Asgard last week, um, so I don't know what else I can add to it. It's a, <laughs> uh, it's a graphic novel adaptation of the Norse myths. Uh, it's actually been out since 2007, uh, about fall of 2007 is when it came out, uh, and it's a, it's a Zurich book. Uh, I actually... Uh, published it with a with the help from a with the help of a grant from the Zurich Foundation, wow, cool. uh, which I won back in two thousand seven. Nice. And um, yeah, I've done a couple of other things since then that people actually might know me from. I did a, a book called Super Powered Word Study, uh, an educational comic book uh, that I worked on collaborating with a, a colleague and a friend of mine uh, named Bucky Carter. He's a sort of a comics scholar comics education scholar and uh so we've been uh promoting that uh in a small way over the last year and a half or so and uh and then uh, recently i just got this in the mail today so cool. i'm going to show you guys oh breaking uh, news those. here we go exclusive yeah, here you go. Oh, brace yourself <laughs> okay uh this is a book i illustrated pretty recently uh going with the norse mythology theme again yes. cool. don't ask me to pronounce the title uh <laughs> I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see. Oh, this uh, is yeah, Americans would have no idea how to pronounce that. And uh, Angavalo. Yeah. <laughs> that sounds pretty good. That sounds pretty <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> so uh, so anyway, this is a, it's not a comic. It's a, you know, it's actually a prose book. It's all in modern Norwegian. Nice. But uh, I did some illustration for it. And, um, you know, uh, it's a little more illustrative than a comic, but it's got, you know, my art style in it, so, uh, so I just uh, got my copy of that today. Uh, Exciting! Yeah, that's awesome. pretty. It was a pretty. It was a red letter day for me, and uh, and I'm currently working on uh, a graphic novel called The Beast of Wolf's Bay, which I uh, got some sweet Kickstarter funding for, and that thing is going to be out probably this coming fall because I still have to finish it. <laughs> <laughs> Something you got to do. You know? Yeah. 
Well, awesome. Well, it sounds like you got a lot going on. That's really cool that you got your hands in all these things, and it's uh, you. It seems like you love this Norwegian theme, and it, that, that's the way to go. John wore a Norwegian shirt <laughs> even today, and to celebrate. Um, but that's that's pretty cool that you have your uh, little um, niche kind of thing that you're that you have there. Um, do you like doing things other than um, um, you know uh, this Nor Norwegian god history and? Um, yeah, history? yeah. Um, <clears throat> I mean, I, I you know I'm a pretty traditional comic book fan, I guess. Sure. Um, I kind of br I kind of uh, started reading comics so early that I didn't really differentiate between what kind of comics I was reading. And so I was reading like, uh, the far side cartoons and the Calvin and Hobbes, lots of newspaper strips. I was super into the Dick Tracy strip. Um, and, uh, and I think they all have kind of colored my, uh, you know, colored my life in some way as a, sure. as a comics person. But, you know, I was also really into Spider-Man. Um, I was really into comic books without reading a lot of comic books. I kind of knew what they were, and I, I understood the language and the visual language really quickly. And, um, so I didn't need to be super into comics. So, um, But I'm, I'm also, yeah, I'm a mythology nerd. Uh, that just happened to be the niche that got me um, making work. Yeah. Uh, um, so, <laughs> yeah. Well, it's awesome. It's cool. I mean, it's yeah, actually, yeah. You know, I mean, Beast, the Beast of Wolf's Bay. I should, I should say, is uh, uh, it's a it's a modernization of Beowulf, but oh, it's really nice. got nothing to do with Vikings or yeah. a monster. Oh, well, it's got something to do with monsters, but it's um, you know, rather than being a burly uh, Viking kind of warrior guy, uh, my Beowulf character is actually a a doctoral candidate in paleoanthropology. And so, so it, like to modernize this, yeah, I took him out of the sword. I sure. took him, I, gave, I took the sword away from him, and I gave him, <clears throat> you know, uh, a couple of degrees instead, and uh, maybe some some uh, glasses and some general nerdy characteristics. And so, so that book is going to be. I mean, it's based on Beowulf, but it's it's going to be a lot different. It it owes a lot to also my um, my interest in in in, in like cryptozoology and the X Files and um, science fiction that kind of floats in that world. Nice, awesome. Yeah, um, I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, I managed to draw a whole bunch of pages last week, and I uh, I'm feeling pretty good about where it's going. That's the way to do it. Uh, I was going to ask you too. You mentioned you know you're kind of you know a traditional comic book reader in, in the sense who, who who were you reading? Who are you reading? What are your favorites or not so favorites? Okay, well. <clears throat> this is like the sad, this is a sad thing to admit, but, um, <laughs> but I'm going to do it. Uh, I'm not currently buying any comics. Okay. I know, isn't that, isn't well, that Well, you got to focus it on happens, you, though. Hey, yeah, you got to do your thing. Isn't that most of the world? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yeah. well I, I mean, you know, no, I, I've, no, yeah, totally. I've been buying comics for a long time, and, uh, but uh, a couple of days after Gods of Asgard came out, I actually started uh, graduate school, and... Um, so for uh, the next couple of years after that, I, I my 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 stack my you know my pull file uh, got shorter and shorter every week, and uh, eventually I was just buying um, I think Walking Dead and Invincible and Ultimate Spider Man, and that was it. And uh, sadly, I, uh, I I basically said okay, you know I got to finish this thesis. I have to read all of these books on like design theory. I have a uh, MFA in design, and so I was reading all these books on design theory, like Victor Popinek and um, you know Donald Norman and these guys who, who have these thick, heavy concepts that they're trying to put out. And I just didn't have room for comics for quite a while, and then uh, moved to Minnesota and uh, never really found the right place to jump back in. I, I feel like I need to catch up on The Walking Dead through some trades or something because I love Kirkman's work, but. Um, uh, but I just, I just haven't. So, um, you know, I've been poking around a little bit, uh, rereading Neil Gaiman stories and stuff. Uh, uh, you know, <laughs> just generally like read, I don't read as much as I'd like. Yeah. Well, Hey man, it happens. You're, it happens. you're writing. Yeah, you're doing it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'm spending, yeah, exactly. I'm spending my, all my time that I would be living in the comics world, probably like drawing and writing and whatever <laughs> and I, I do find that you know like a lot I think to a lot of comic readers that's surprising to 
you know, like that their their comic writers don't read comics on a weekly basis or go to their weekly comic shop, and that's tends out, out to be quite a bit. I mean, oh. and also when you're reading a lot of other comics and you're a comic writer, you are also going to have a lot of influence from these other writers that are writing right now. And it's almost better to read a lot of these other different things that are going to make your your comics much more unique and better in the long term then. Um, yeah, I, to I totally agree. Um, actually, um, I'm pretty broad with my with my geekery. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, comics is, is a thing that I do. I, I have a, a one-man uh, graphic design consultancy as well, and so that takes up a lot of my time. And uh, But uh, when it comes to reading, I don't really discriminate either. I mean, comics and novels, I'll read historical fiction and um i actually just you know the steve jobs biography was the first time i ever read a biography but uh <laughs> but man i'd read another biography that's pretty great yeah. um, <laughs> so I, I i try not to discriminate and uh, i don't I, I have some genres that i sort of lean toward but uh but i like to pick from all over the place and i like to to create things in many different ways so um uh you know, that's why I'm not putting out three graphic novels a year. Because <laughs> uh, I'm doing all kinds of other stuff uh, as well. And um, and that's kind of what keeps me going. But yeah, yeah, you're right. I think a lot, of, a lot of writers are not reading as much as they'd like. And a lot of artists are not uh, as well, just because that's what we do in our spare time is, uh, you know, draw stuff or whatever. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, we uh, we did want to take a look at your book this evening. I did have one other question for you, though. Sure, so, sure. Are you uh, just kind of, you know, with the emergence of these digital marketplaces that the big two at least are pushing, what's your take on that as a creator? I'm well, curious, you know? okay. So you're um, talking like... I, it's awesome. awesome. Yeah, you're talking yeah. like E, like... E-comics. Yeah, totally. Yeah. Comics and on Fire and iPad, gotcha. Yeah, I'm totally on board. Uh, I recently uh, set it up so that Gods of Asgard is actually released huh. uh, for, uh, I think, Kindle Fire. I'm using the Graphically system, which is a yep. wonderful system. And um, and so it's on. It's, it's available for Kindle Fire and for iBookstore. And I believe coming very soon to the Nook and to, um, what's the other one, Kobo? Yeah, I don't know the other one. I don't know. I'm a I'm a I'm, I'm a Mac guy. <laughs> after, I'm a print guy. <laughs> <laughs> after, yeah, sure. Well, after uh, after uh, the Apple stuff, I kind of start my eyes start glazing over a little bit. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I'm I'm totally for it. I mean, I think e e readers are awesome. I think I'm I'm one of these guys who really likes to embrace new technology. I'm, I don't know if I'm an early adopter of things, but um, but I certainly uh, want to take advantage of a good idea when I see it. Um, and I don't, you know, it's funny, uh, like in the Ghostbusters movie, do you know that scene in the beginning of Ghostbusters where, it's not really in the beginning, but Egon is uh, under Janine's desk and uh, she's taught she's trying to impress him by how with how intellectual she is and she's talking about all the stuff she does and oh, yeah. and she likes to read and her friends think she's too intellectual and uh, she's waiting for him to respond and he just goes print is dead <laughs> <laughs> that was in like 1980 mm -hmm. what 1984 yeah exactly yeah. Oh, people God. have been saying print is dead forever and uh you know, it's it's not like practically thirty years later. Uh, we're still reading real books and we're still buying real comics, and uh, you know, less of them, sure. But uh, media changes and evolves, and uh, the printing press really uh, ruined a lot of careers for monks who worked in illuminated manuscripts. You know, like, um, that it's it's a it's, it's collateral damage, and uh, and and but we we need to move forward. It's 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 important, but print will never die and printed material printed comics will never die uh, but uh i think as creators we need to embrace uh whatever uh format gets our stuff out there exactly. in the best possible way to the right people and i think that this is it okay yeah i mean i, I on, on your side of things i just don't i don't think it would impact you that much because you're still writing the cool stuff you're still drawing the cool stuff you know what i mean like 
much. Not a lot really well, changes on this. You know, you're right. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I think there's going to be always be people that are mad about the retailers and about oh. Diamond and about you know your local comic shop and stuff like that. But it, it's really it's like let's get these way to read comics for any person that wants to ever read a comic and exactly. they don't need to if they want to go to the comic shop it's still there if they want to have it online it should be available I went and read I've read a lot of comics digitally it's far more easier for me to just pay a cheaper price get the get the um, book right on my computer and just read it I don't even have an e-reader and I read it on my computer some people think that's crazy but I, I think it's fine I, I like it and I, and I I I read tons of web, web comics as well totally. it, Oh so yeah, you know, it's Jill, uh, I just uh, at uh, at SpringCon I, I ran into um, Paul Taylor who does Wapsie Square. Do you yeah. guys know that web comic? I don't think so. No, I haven't heard of it. Oh man, I I had a total uh, moment at the con because I walked <laughs> by his table and I said, "I know that. Why do I know that?" And it's it's a, it's a web comic I read, but it was years ago. Like uh, I don't even. Like eight years ago, maybe. Awesome. <clears throat> I'm trying to remember. He's been. I, I talked to him for a little bit about it because I said I used to be a fan of this web comic, and I have not read it in a long time, and I can't remember what it's about. <laughs> uh, but I know uh, I've read it. A tra- uh, col- you know, a trade collection uh, of, of 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 his book. But I, I wanted to throw a shout out in there because it's really cool. Okay. Uh, he bring he works a lot of mythology into it. It kind of starts off kind of slice of life, and then it kind of. Um, this Aztec god shows up and starts things start getting a little weird uh, for our <clears throat> for our main characters, um, but uh, it, it's uh, really beautifully drawn. His artwork evolves over over the course of several years, as a lot of web comic people do. But it uh, it gets really insanely good, and uh, he's from Minneapolis, um, and the book takes place in or uh, book the web comic takes place in Minneapolis, although it's a version of Minneapolis that has uh, Aztec gods and, um, awesome. like, <laughs> demons separated from their hosts just kind of roaming around oh, acting yeah. like sorority <laughs> girls and uh, creating <laughs> alcoholic drinks out of thin air. <laughs> it's good stuff. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. That's awesome. For sure. Well, the, hey, that brings us right into your book, and so let's... Cool. let's Alcoholic let's, drinks out of thin air brings you to this book. Oh, why no. not? Hey, listen to this guy. Mythical gods <laughs> is what brings us into this book. Right. Gods of Asgard. We talked about it a little bit before, guys, uh, We, you know, on our Spring Con episode. Um, this will probably come out a few weeks after that, so, you know, check back. If you didn't watch it, watch that. You'll get to see when we kind of talk more about it um, in depth to what, you know, John thought. But let's... Now we got the creator here, so now we yeah. get to really hear about it, and I, John just gave it to me last <laughs> night, he stopped in, I told him I would try to get read the whole thing, but I didn't have time, That's one day, okay. give me a break, I'll um, forgive so, you. sorry guys, sorry, and, um, but, so John will probably have most of the questions, but, you know, here we go, Gaza Asgard, it, it, for what I read, I read the first letter in about the first five pages, it's really cool, <laughs> and I, I liked, I, I at least like, you know, when you get a, Indie comic book, you just never know what the art is going to be like, what the storytelling is going to be like. Mm-hmm. Is it go- you know you may have all the greatest ideas in the world, but can you really pull it together? And I mean, within the first five pages, I, I mean, I knew right away that that was not a problem at all. This is a great, great way to use storytelling and just a very clean book. And so, yeah, I thought it was great, and I can't wait to hear what John has to ask you. Absolutely. <laughs> well, basically, right off the bat, I, the, the first thing that I read, and it took me my whole 15-minute break to read, was your letter, your prelude letter, which I thought was actually really neat. Um, when you mentioned that you did all this research, you know, I was kind of, you know, thumbing through it towards the back, and you have your whole bibliography. Holy <laughs> smoke. So, I mean, how long did this take you? What a nerd! <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. No, I mean, it's awesome. Uh, well, I don't know. I feel like it kind of took me my whole life yeah. uh, in in a, in a s- certain way because I, I kind of grew up, well, as it says right in the intro letter of the book, I kind of grew up reading Norse mythology, and I, I read all kinds of things, and, and I think my family was just plugging media into my hands because I would consume it so quickly and uh and so one of the things wound up being Norse mythology and I I it just something in it just clicked with me it happens to people who like anyone who's a fan of those uh stories understands how how it can that can just happen and uh so I just you know I read one book and then I read another book and then I read some other things and then I would learn that uh you know one of the things I read was 
was a, a translation of this one story, but that there was another translation uh, that existed somewhere else. And, and so it wound up, um, yeah, I don't know. I think it was maybe like 20 or 30% research and then uh, more like 70 or 80% just being a nerd for my whole life. I was going to say that's such the nerd mentality to be like, oh, there's another <laughs> interpretation. I must find it. Yeah. <laughs> I, love I that. must learn about this now. <laughs> Perfect. Yeah, I don't want to go outside. <laughs> <laughs> There's too many books to be read in here. They're not going to read themselves. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, my. man, that's awesome. But, yeah, I mean, just the, the multiple versions of, you know, how many versions of a character can there be out there? How do I best interpret it? You know, like, I, I thought that was really cool. You know, so I went into the book thinking, okay, this would be kind of, you know, this would be awesome. And I was just reading through it. It was a smart move to open up, you know, introducing the characters with how you're going to put the spin on it. Good move on there. Because... Thanks. Me, myself, and I, when I look at Loki, I've been brainwashed by Marvel that Loki is mm -hmm. the half-brother of Thor. And this one, he's more of the blood brother, correction of Odin? Yeah, man. Like, right, okay. So that was, you know, I was like, okay, I can roll with that, you know, because you told me <laughs> in advance, yeah. yeah. So I totally appreciate that. Um, it's. I don't know why Marvel did that, actually. I mean, that's, that's, a, that's a creative choice that they made at some point. And, uh, you know, Stan was writing this thing um that's something he you know i don't know i mean stan lee has been hugely influential in a lot of ways in the world but i kind of don't i kind of wonder like the way comics were done in those days uh it was really production assembly line like uh you know the the ford um assembly line model <laughs> Totally. And so I kind of wonder if he did a lot of research at all when he put it together, or if he had remembered a few stories from, like, 10th grade and just said, that'll work. Put him here. I'm going to guarantee there. that's what happened. I'm pretty sure Kirby just drew it all, and then he added words later. Yeah. You know, anyway. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm sure I can... I'll guarantee you Stanley has never opened a Norse God's book ever. <laughs> but he sure wrote plenty of comics about him. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, so uh, so and it doesn't really change the dynamic all that much. I mean, Thor and, and Loki still kind of pal around, and everyone's eating apples of youth all the time, so no one is ever really too old. And exactly. That was one of the fun That's challenges awesome. of the book was like, oh, okay, there's like four <laughs> generations of gods, and they're all pretty much like adults. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. And that was, um, I mean, that's just kind of one thing. What I did was, and I'll show you here, just so you're a believer. I took notes of the OMG moments. Oh, uh, no. Two sticky notes throughout break. And I, I, I don't even need to throw page numbers out here. I wrote them down, but I kind of just caught all these moments where I was like, oh, man. Starting off with, and if I mispronounce these names, I apologize, but Murmur's head just flat out getting cut off. <laughs> and then he brings it back to life as a source of wisdom. That's yeah. so awesome. Like... That's, that's crazy. Um, throwing eyeballs to the skies and there'll be stars. Page 60. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, and I, you know, as I'm reading What's this... What's a wacky dude? Yeah, I'm just like, Eric's really getting down here. Um, page 63. Uh, Freya, <laughs> did I pronounce that right? Yes. Sleeps with the dwarven smiths for the necklace. One night yeah. after the other. Was she really that grimy or what? what well, what's wrong with that? Maybe she just liked to have a she, good time, John. She wanted the bling. That's why she... She wanted that necklace because uh, her her quest for beautiful things was on parallel. Was yeah, on yeah. She well, she's um, you know, Freya's a fascinating character, yeah. and I, I kind of didn't, I wasn't able to include all the stuff that I wanted to about her because she's also kind of like, she's got this role as sort of a, a death goddess actually, where she's, uh, I think she's uh, captain or queen of the Valkyries, and uh, she's also kind of a goddess of like of witchcraft. Okay. Um, but there aren't really a lot of myths that survive where we see her in that role. Uh, so, so what really survives is the rest of it, the beauty and the love kind of thing. And, 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 and it's really like a, <clears throat> uh, it's a physical love that she's the goddess of, uh, <laughs> less so than the romantical love, I guess. Uh, or that's the way I've always understood it. She's, she's, um, but she's, uh, you know, she can be kind of aggressive and kind of, um, uh, um, headstrong, I guess, and, 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 and as a character, and, and that's what I liked about her. I mean, she's very, uh, she's very dynamic. I kind of wish there was more to do. I didn't, you know, I was, I was adapting rather than, uh, creating stories. So I kind of wish there was more 
I could have done with her because I, I mean, I like Freya. She's a dynamic figure. Uh, she's right up there with the with uh, Odin and Loki, really. Uh, Thor is less dynamic, but he does dynamic things. So uh, you know, <laughs> uh, he's he becomes interesting sort of by default, but he's kind of a lunkhead. <laughs> well, and speaking of Thor being dynamic, sure. page seventy six, dressing up as Freya. Oh yeah, man. <laughs> That's pretty rad. Was there like a full blown story about that? Like Loki yeah. actually talked him into it, and I'm sure he had some more choice language maybe in their times, but he didn't seem to like that too much. Um, Loki <laughs> being a bridesmaid. Uh, <laughs> What I, I love just, about that story. I was cracking up just that illustration of him in the cart, and he just looks incredibly unhappy. <laughs> and then the veil. Why are his eyes glowing red? Oh, she's just had a long day. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's one of my favorite stories from Norse myth, from uh, the Norse myths, and it's and it's partly because it wasn't until I was an adult that I kind of like was able to think about this. But these guys, these guys are deities, and I mean, if you're if you're a practitioner of as a true today they are still your deities uh but by and large the uh you know the the religion behind this is uh that you know from the from those stories there uh is is pretty much gone i mean azatru is like a throwback uh religion but uh, i don't i don't know enough about it to know how accurate it might be i mean i, I know they obviously don't do the human sacrifices <laughs> or anything like that so um I mean, it's evolved over a couple thousand years, but uh, uh, I mean, th these guys were they were deities, and and they're basically campfire stories. Some of the some of the myths, uh, like they, they they had no problem putting Thor in a dress, and you know, having him have to go through a wedding ceremony to some monster, uh, and then laughing about it, like, haha, here is our virile god of thunder. Uh, our fertility god who protects us from the evil of the, of the universe. Uh, we'll just put him in drag and um, have a hearty laugh at his expense. I mean, it's fascinating as a cultural artifact how how um, how how they were treated, how 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 the gods were treated, because uh, they were they were kind of at the same time they were gods, but they were also like like characters, um, like uh, you know, like you turn on Lost. Uh, well, Lost is not anymore, but uh, if you're watching <laughs> Lost, and you turn it on and you're like, oh, uh, how's Sawyer going go, gonna to get out of this scrape that he's gotten himself in? I mean, that's essentially, uh, they, they filled that role as well. It's uh, uh, kind of kind of amazing and that, that they could do both things because it's kind of foreign to us today. For sure, that, that's cool. <laughs> I, mean, that's, that's awesome. I can't wait to crack it. I just, uh, yeah, I mean, I just... Throughout the story, I was just like, whoa, that's awesome, that's crazy. Thor sees a chair, sits, and falls asleep in it. I mean, you know, that's that's awesome. I need, I need to take a rest. There's a chair. Okay. <laughs> so, you, so are, as you read this, could, I mean, is it it? Is this like, um, uh, you know, a full, can you take what you wrote in this comic book and, like, consider it, you know, history and tell you tell people well actually this is how it happened i mean well you know or is this your own interpretation more well it's my interpretation but uh i feel like it comes from a place that's that's pretty sincere yeah and uh and i, I tried to keep as much of that sincerity and authenticity in it that it can kind of like function as a as a pretty um i don't know i mean i think it's a pretty sincere adaptation of the myths i guess is, is mm -hmm. Yeah, best way to put it. And um, uh, I, I, I've been to not so much with comic cons, but but I've been to uh, like <laughs> I've been, I sold the book at the Asheville Viking Festival in Asheville, Ohio. Which, if you kind of imagine a Renaissance fair, and then if you take you take out all of the uh, all the Renaissance, and you know, <laughs> there's always like ten dudes walking around dressed like Vikings at the Renaissance fair. If you make a whole little mini Renaissance fair out of those guys, that's what it was. And uh, so, so a lot of the reenactor guys and uh, some as a true guy like people uh, tend to really enjoy the book as well. So I feel like it kind of succeeded there, awesome. and um, and I'm hoping you know hopefully that's something I did right. <laughs> yeah, and and you you talked about it earlier, um, you know how you won this thing in 2007 to make this book. Yeah, made. Can you kind of? I, I haven't heard of that. Um, it was, oh, you know, sure, yeah, man. Kind of tell, yeah. us, tell us about it, how this happened, and, you know, because I'd love to hear it, you know. 
Yeah, sure. Uh, <clears throat> sadly, it's uh, now kind of defunct as of last month. But uh, the Zerik Foundation was around for quite a while. It's a charitable foundation. It's still around, but it doesn't deal with comics as much now. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it was started by Peter Laird, one of the co-creators of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Sure, yeah, totally. Yeah, and so I'm from New Hampshire, and he's from, I think he's from Massachusetts, but uh, they created the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in New Hampshire, so uh, it's sort of my, my own home state, sort of source of pride. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, when, uh, when you know, Laird got pretty rich, I think, from the, you know, licensing all, and all of that, and uh, set up money to be a charitable trust, and part of what this charitable trust did is it funded independent comics, uh, based on artistic, literary, or educational merit. And so they would pick a certain number of winners uh, twice a year and give them up to $5,000 to self-publish a comic. And all you really needed to do was apply in the right way. You had to, like, print out what you would... you print out a copy of what you had done. I think I printed out five or six copies because the whole committee had to have a copy. And so I sent, like essentially three reams of paper <laughs> to Massachusetts and, uh, and, uh, they reviewed it and, uh, and I wound up winning the full amount. I got a full five grand. And uh, with that, I got a pretty substantial print run and took out an ad and previews and, um, uh, paid for a couple of other minor things and, uh, yeah, had some minor success with it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, the, the Zerik grant uh, just sort of closed up shop from the comic book segment because, um, well, as we were talking about e-publishing and stuff earlier, like that's become really uh, easy for people to get their stuff out there now. And uh, yeah, so, um, I mean, you can do print on demand, you can do e-reader stuff pretty easily. Uh, heck, you can just go to a, your local print shop, print up 20 copies, and sell them on Amazon. You know, uh, it doesn't really take too much. So, um, so they kind of felt like the writing was on the wall, and uh, they should probably uh, focus on other things. So, cool. um, it was really kind of sad for a lot of indie comics people who, uh, like, either won or wanted to win one, or people who just kind of liked the fact that uh, certain projects would get funding and attention uh just based on merit um people people whose projects like mine might not have fit into the traditional silo of like superhero yeah <laughs> slice of life <laughs> crime <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah crime no yeah film noir crime uh like yeah whatever um yeah it's it's like well norse mythology kind of sells but uh <laughs> Um, maybe not the, maybe not, uh, <laughs> maybe not in a traditional way, like maybe that's too much. So anyway, it worked out in my favor and, um, uh, yeah, and that really was pretty, cool. that's pretty much what it was. Yeah. That's, that's really cool. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. It was great. It's too bad that it's defunct now, but <laughs> that's what, a good opportunity. You know, defunct. what are you going to do? At least, Hey, at least they're obviously they're going to be still working in other fields. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. And I that's, mean, ex and I mean, that's I mean, exactly true though. What you said. I mean, anybody can put a comic out these days. Which is awesome, you know, that it is so easy to get a website and put your own computer, yeah. own stuff yeah. out there, you know, so. But yeah, for sure. But yeah, um, overall, honestly, I mean, I, when I, when I picked the book up from you, you know, it was, it was great to meet you first of all in person. From Facebook to real life, but um, <laughs> that was really cool um, that we made And then that back connection. to the internet. Yeah. Right? Heaven forbid. But, um, no, it was, I, the book itself, very clean presentation. We commend you on that. It was, Thanks. it was cool. Yeah. Um, we were going through what we got at the con, you know, and we, you know, Andy this, Andy that, and then I was like, well, I got this sweet book, you know, and so it was, it was, yeah, it, exactly. it definitely stood out to me, and so I'm glad that I had a chance to swing by the table. And super, super fun. So, you know, you guys get it. Yeah, and there's plenty of ways to find it. You know, I'll, I'll post links down below, but, but check it out. It's obviously worth the chance. Well, well, you heard it from the man yeah. himself. And let's hear it from the man himself. <laughs> where can we find it? Where can we and the viewers find you at online? Oh, man, I am all over the Internet. Uh, you can find Gods of Asgard at godsofasgard.com. You can also buy it on Amazon or on iBookstore. Um, you can find me at uh, eric-evanson.com. Evanson is all E's. 
and uh, Eric is with a K and not without, not with a C. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, once you start spelling it, it's hard. One of those <laughs> elitist Eric's. <laughs> no, just kidding. That's awesome. Yeah, that's my mom. <laughs> <laughs> She said, it doesn't look finished if it doesn't have a K. And you know what? She's 100% right. There you go. No offense to any Eric's with a C out there. It's, uh, you're, you're, you're still awesome. You're just not completely as awesome as those of us with a K. <laughs> um, let's see. You can find me on Twitter at E. Evanson. And, um, oh, and the new book is at wolfsbay.com. Well, definitely, we'll have to check that out. Everybody, anytime you see this guy's work, you better be buying it. Yeah. Watching the show, he took the time to <laughs> tell you all about his stuff. Thank you so much for coming Thanks on. For I mean, it, by, man. It's been, Thanks, it was man. A, it was a great show, and so we really do appreciate it, man. You know, no doubt about it. Definitely. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Yeah. If you ever, if you, you know, your new project gets close to completion, definitely give us a holler. We'll uh, definitely we'll, we'll help promote it. No doubt about it. it. So, I yeah. will do. I will do that. Thanks. All right. Well, thank you again. And uh, we're just going to wrap it up here really quick. Um, you know the drill. Comicbook at gmail.com. Get at us. Drop us some show ideas. I already gave it all of our um, Twitter tags at the beginning, so I'm just going to wrap it up. Keep it quick. Pound sign. Keep it comics.